Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial on OpenOffice Writer for College Students. In this lesson, we're going to have a quick look at the program layout. Then, in our next lesson, I'll show you the keys you'll use most for your writing assignments. If you haven't yet installed OpenOffice on your computer, go back to Lessons 3 and 4. Okay, let's get started. We're going to cover a lot, but don't get worried if we seem to be covering everything very quickly. In future lessons, we'll use a lot of these keys, and you'll get a better sense of how they work and which ones you'll be using most often. If you've worked with Microsoft Word, some of the layout will seem familiar. At the top of the screen, you'll see a number of drop-down menus. The first drop-down is Open Office, and we'll open the Preferences options for a moment just to make sure your settings are the way they should be. Click on the arrow next to Load Save, and then choose the General option in the list that appears. Make sure that Save Auto Recovery Information Every is checked. This is the tool that will automatically save your work for you. It defaults to 15 minutes, but I suggest you change that number to every 5 minutes. You can change it back to 10 or longer if it bothers you, but Auto Recovery protects you from losing work if you accidentally close your document without saving. Next, open the Language Settings and click on Languages. And just make sure that your language options are set to English USA. You don't want them set to English Great Britain or some other English-speaking country because there are certain spelling variations across these countries. The next drop-down menu is File, and there are a lot of options in this list that we'll be using as the course progresses. So we'll just take a quick look. This is where you'll create a new document or open an existing one. This is also where you'll save your documents and convert them to Microsoft Word files using the Save As tool. You'll see printer tools at the bottom of the list. If you have a printer already linked to the computer you're using, you won't need to do anything special because OpenOffice Writer will recognize the printer. The next drop-down menu is one you'll probably use quite a lot unless you memorize the hotkeys. Undo lets you undo whatever last action you took. You can also cut, copy, and paste from this menu. You may not use the View drop-down menu all that much, but there is one item you should be aware of. If you click on Toolbars, you'll see a list of a number of different toolbars. The ones that have a check mark next to them are visible on your standard set of tools, while the unchecked bars are not. You can change these around to suit your needs. For example, I click on Form Controls and a new bar of options appears. I don't think I'll use them, so I'll just check the Xbox, and they disappear again. There are a lot of tools in the insert list, and you may eventually find that it's worth your while to memorize the hotkey combinations for some. For now, we'll just skim over a number of them. Manual Break, Section, Hyperlink, Header, Footer, Tables, and Comments. I do want to pause to take a look at Special Character. If you ever need to write the word resume or use the copyright symbol, the Special Character option can help you do that. Click on Special Character, and you'll see a grid of different characters including the copyright symbol, the symbol for the British pound, and the accented E for resume. Select the character you want and click OK, and the character will appear in your document by your cursor. Most of the items on the format list are also available on the toolbars at the top of the document, but I do want to show you the autocorrect options screen. This screen lets you tinker with the program's autofill and autocorrect programming. You can see, for example, that if you use the copyright symbol often, it might be faster to type parenthesis, capital C, parenthesis, and the symbols will automatically be converted to the copyright sign. Another value to using this section is that you can both add and remove items. So if you find that a particular series of letters is always being corrected, and you don't want that to happen, you can make changes in here, removing the key. You can also add items, particularly in the abbreviations list, so your program recognizes them as real. Just be sure they are accurate. And if you use them for a class that uses a lot of specific jargon, you may want to remove these changes when you move on to another class. We won't spend too much time on tables, but there are choices here too. The Tools menu has a lot of interesting options. Click on Spelling and Grammar, and you can teach the software to either ignore a word it doesn't recognize, or use one of several spelling options. Again, be sure your language is set to English USA. If the assignment you're working on has a required word count range, you can click on Word Count and find out how many words you've written. 
We also have window in case you want to open a new window, which is useful if you want to compare two documents side by side. And finally, help, which allows you to search OpenOffice help when you need to. Moving down from the top bar, there are a lot of buttons for common tools. If you hover the mouse over the button, you'll see what that button does. I'm going to point out a few of the most common ones. New document. Open an existing document. Save the document. Print. Formatting. We'll get into this a bit later, but for now, be sure that it is set to default. Font type. Font size. Bold, italics, underlined. Left justified, right justified, centered, and full justification. Bullets, numbered lists, and block indent. You'll see at the end of each grouping of tools that there are narrow arrows. If you click on them and choose visible buttons, you'll see a list of buttons that can be made visible, with check marks next to the ones that already are. As you go along, you can uncheck buttons you won't be using all that often and check the ones you will. For example, I'm going to check Save As and uncheck a few that I don't expect to use much during the course of this tutorial. Then I'm going to go over here and check Line Spacing 1 and 2. Your goal should be to keep the top area of the screen clean with only the buttons you use regularly. You can always retrieve a button later if you decide you want it after all. Finally, if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a bar that allows you to make the print appear bigger or smaller, depending on what's most comfortable for you. This won't change the document itself, so feel free to adjust it to whatever feels most comfortable. And that brings us to the end of the OpenOffice Writer Layout lesson. Before starting the next video, I encourage you to spend some time with the buttons at the top of the page checking the buttons that seem like they'll be most useful, and unchecking those you may not use often. Now that you know your way around, our next lesson will begin using these tools to build an essay template, a document you can use for your essay writing that will already have the right font, settings, margins, and other formatting elements set up exactly the way you need them. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial. I look forward to working with you in the next lesson, setting margins, fonts, and line spacing.